If you're new to Linux, you probably never heard of Mandriva. But if you're somebody that's been around since the late 90s, Mandriva usually brings one of three responses. One, you never used it. Two, you didn't like it. Or three, you miss it dearly. Having said that, there are direct descendants to Mandriva that are out there today. One that most people usually talk about is Open Mandriva. And then there's Majea, which is what we're going to be taking a look at today on eBuzz Central. Hey everybody, it's Troy. We are presently at Majea's website, which is majea.org. I'll be sure to include that link in the description below. And when you come to their website, this is what you're met with. It just basically says changing your perspective, secure, stable operating system, free software, elected governance, and it's a nonprofit organization. And if you're a developer, you can be a part of it. If you go to About Us, it breaks down that Majea is a GNU Linux-based operating system. It's a community project. And beyond delivering a secure, stable, sustainable operating system, the goal is also to become and maintain a credible and recognized community in the free software world. This was started in 2010 as a fork of Mandriva Linux. And there's hundreds of individuals worldwide that work on this operating system. It has eight major releases. They try to do it once a year. And what we're going to be looking at today is the most recent version. And if you go to the download section, this is one of the things that I love about this. You have what's called the classic installation. You can download it and just install it. Or you can download the live media or you have a network installation. Now what's great is if you go to the live media is you have three different flavors. You've got the KDE Plasma, GNOME, and the XFCE. Now, if you're on an older system or you're on a 32-bit system, you'll want to go with the XFCE because it gives you the option of 64 or 32-bit. Once you pick what you want, it then gives you the option to do it by BitTorrent or Direct Link. We're going to be looking at the XFC desktop today because if there are people out there with 32-bit hardware, I want to show them how beautiful and how quick it does run. It is truly a great operating system. And then if we go back up top, you have support right here. It talks about the life cycles, your updates, your community support. You've got community support forums, and you've got other Majea community forums, okay? They've also got IRC channels, wikis, mailing lists. And then it breaks down your hardware requirements, a minimum of 512 megabytes of RAM. Two gigabytes is recommended. And then, of course, bug reports. You've got your wiki, your docs, community, contribute, donate, you, or contact. And then, of course, you can change your language on the website. So what we're going to do real quick is we're going to zip over to the Majea desktop. And if you download Majea, throw it on a USB or open it up in a virtual machine. This is the screen you're met with. As you can see right off the bat, it is the XFCE desktop. Over on the left, you've got the live disk right here, removable volume. Then you've got trash, your file system, home, and then install on a hard disk if you would like to. You've got two panels, one up top, one down on the bottom. The one down on the bottom has show desktop. So if you do happen to have something open and you need to get back to the desktop, you can get there quickly. And then, of course, you have your workspace switcher. You've got four different workspaces. We'll go ahead and change that back to number one. Now, up top, you've got your power button. Log out button, you've got date and time, and you have sound. And then if you come over to the left, you have the Majea Control Center, Web Browser, File Manager, Mouse Pad, Terminal Emulator, and then, of course, Settings. Now, if you right-click on the panel, you can adjust the panel properties if you would like. You can add new items, panel preferences. Let's go ahead and open that up. Right here, it's in a horizontal mode. You can automatically hide the panel if you would like to. I'm just going to leave it on Never, but you can intelligently hide it or always hide it. And then, of course, you have your row size. You could come down here and make that bigger. And as you can tell, the panel up top gets bigger. And we'll drop that back down. And then you can adjust the number of rows that are on the panel. You can make it bigger or smaller, one or two rows. And then you've got appearance. You can set it up for dark mode if you'd like to. And as you can see, everything switches over to dark mode. I think I will go ahead and leave that there. Background, you can adjust the background of the panels, okay? If there's a picture or something you want it to look like or a solid color, you can do that from right here. Icons, you can adjust size automatically. That's already set. So basically what that does is if you download something and the icon is a little different than what's on the system already, it will automatically adjust it to be cohesive with the system. 
and then you have items, things that would be included on your taskbar. You can go down through here, and if you want to add or pull things from that, you can. It's quite easy, but that's another thing that if you do download it for a test drive, you can play around with that a little bit and see all the adjustments you can make. So we're going to go ahead and close out of that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up top here and go ahead and open up the Magea Control Center because you've got a lot of things that you can do from right here. I'm going to go ahead and maximize this. Right here on Software Management, you have Install and Remove Software. Let's go ahead and open that up. And it's finding the installed packages and available packages. And basically, it drops them down here into categories. Everything from accessibility all the way down to video. Now, all you would do right here is if you clicked on one, let's try accessibility. It opens up and shows you what's already installed. And you could go down to editors or emulators, file tools, geography. And as you can see right out of the box, it's got the VirtualBox guest editions installed. And it's got Kimu installed. Okay. You've got geography, graphical desktop, graphics, monitors. It just breaks everything down to a nice category and makes it easy to see. Now, if you wanted to install something, let's say you were looking for something like GIMP. Let's go ahead and do a search. And as you can see, GIMP is already installed, which is pretty awesome. But if it wasn't, you would see this would be unchecked. All you would have to do is come over here and check it to install it and then come down here and apply and it would install it on your system. So they make it pretty easy to get software and control software. So just another plus about the Magea operating system. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Now we come down to hardware. Right here, you can browse and configure hardware. You've got sound configuration. Set up the graphical server. Set up the keyboard layout. Set up your pointer device, printers, scanners, and power monitoring. And if you go to network and internet, this is where you do all your proxies or setting up your LAN, or your Wi-Fi connections system. You've got everything from authentication, managing localization for your system, and snapshots. Now, if you click on this, you're about to install the following software packages on your computer. Drac snapshot, proceed. I'm not going to proceed because I'm in a virtual box, but that's how you would be able to make a snapshot of your system. Should you have any problems in the future, you could go ahead and refresh or restore from that snapshot, and you'd be good to go. And then, of course, network sharing, local disks, security, configure your system security, add parental controls if you would like, and then boot. You can set it up for auto login, set up your display manager, set up your boot system, all from within the Magea Control Center. So if you do download this, definitely take a look at that. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. We've already looked at the web browser. Now we're going to take a look at the file manager. And as you can see, it's the Thunar file manager. This is one of my favorite file managers for the simple fact that it's very light, compact, but it's still powerful enough to let you get everything done that you need to get done. Over here on the left, you've got your usual suspects. Then you've got your home folders right here. And then your file, edit, view, go, and help right here. Let's go ahead and see what version of Thunar this is. It is 4.16.2. So it's the newest version of Thunar. So that is your file manager. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Then we're going to come back up top. You've got Mousepad, which is a simple text editor. You can do all the text editing you need to do in here, or you can take notes if you want to. I use it for both. If you would like a more powerful text editor, you can zip on over, download one, and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And let's go ahead and open up the terminal. I want to see right off the bat if they have HTOP installed. And they do not, so let's check top. And top is installed. Right now, we've got about 3 gigabytes of RAM issued to this machine. At rest with just the terminal open, you're at about 400 megabytes. Guys, that is light. That makes it easy on resources and saves the RAM for what's most important. Applications and multitasking. Things that make your job easier. And speaking of easier, have you had a chance to check out our store yet? The easiest place for you to get your Linux-inspired gear. We've got apparel. We've got t-shirts. If you click on t-shirts, you can go down through here. We've got Arch-inspired t-shirts, Debian-inspired, Channel Merch, Linux-inspired t-shirts. Then you've got your new Cali t-shirt. And then we got the new one that I like. It's okay if you don't like Linux. Not everyone has good taste. But we also have hoodies and sweatshirts tank tops, long sleeve tees. On accessories, we have phone cases. We do have those for Apple and Samsung. And we do have stickers if you want a new sticker for your laptop. And then, of course, drinkware. We got our mugs and our steel tumblers and our water bottles. 
So if you haven't yet, zip on over to the Ebo Central store, check it out. If there's something that you want that's not on the store, drop that in the comments below and keep an eye on the store because we have three new products dropping this week. One's going to be for Debian, one for Ubuntu, and one for Linux Mint. So now back to Majea's desktop. We're going to go ahead and close out of the terminal. And then we're going to go to system settings. And when you open up system settings, if you're familiar with XFCE, you're going to know exactly what you're looking at. If you're not, we'll just go through this real quick. You've got appearance over here. You can change the style that you're using. We've got add way to add way to dark or high contrast. If you switch that over to dark, it makes everything dark. I'm going to leave that the way it is right there. Then you've got icons. You've only got two here. Now, if you want to download and add icons, it's simple. Just download them. Once you've got them downloaded, come down here, click add. Go over to where the folds are downloaded and you're good to go. Fonts, you can change your default font, the size of your font. You can enable anti-aliasing, change your hinting, whatever you need to do in here to make your fonts look crisp and sharp. And then over to settings, this is just showing menu buttons. If you want to take the images off your menu buttons, you can. And then you can show images in the menus. You can just come over here and kind of customize it to the way you want it. But that's pretty much a quick look at the system appearance settings. Let's go ahead and close out of that and come back over to settings. You also have settings for desktop, file manager settings, display, power manager, light DMGTK, greeter settings, and then of course your settings editor. So if you do download it, zip on over here, check the settings menu out. We'll go ahead and close out of that. Now, if you come up here, you've got the Majea app launcher. Let's go ahead and click on it. You've got your favorites recently used. You've got all applications. You have development. You've got Emacs, LibreOffice Base. Then on documentation, you've got a live installer manual, MCC manual. On graphics, you do have document scanner, GIMP, Restretto image viewer. Internet, you've got Claws Mail, Deluge, Empathy, Firefox, HexChat, Network Center. Now, if you've never tried Claws Mail, it's pretty light, makes things pretty easy to use. You can go ahead and move forward here. If you wanted to set up a email account, what I'm going to do here real quick is plug it in, and then I'll be right back with you. And as you can see, it opens up just like this. My email is downloading in the background. It does not show until all of the email has been downloaded, which for me, I've got thousands of emails, could take a while, so I'm going to go ahead and go over this. You've got your inbox, you've got sent, drafts, queue, and trash. And when you get to inbox, it says, welcome to Claus Mail. Let's go ahead and open that up. As you can see, not a lot of fanciness to it. It goes pretty quick, makes things easy to see. Okay. Now, when you are downloading your mail on your regular account, you will see the images that come with your mail and things like that. This is just a graphical way to see that Claus Mail is working. So take a look at that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that, go back over to the apps, go to Office, You've got LibreOffice installed out of the box. Now, what I do want to see here is what version of LibreOffice they have. And as it opens up, I'm going to go ahead and go to Help and go About LibreOffice. And you're running version 7.0.4.2. So that is a newer version. So let's go ahead and close that. I am really enjoying this operating system. It's really smooth. It's beautiful. Let's go back up top here. Let's go to Sciences. You've got LibreOffice Math. You've got Settings which we looked at earlier, sound and video, which gives you Parole Media Player, Pulse Audio Volume Control, Sound Converter, Sound Juicer, XF Burn, XF MPC, and then Tools. You've got Epson Inkjet Printer you can set up, Klosker Calculator, HP Device Manager, so you can set up an HP printer or scanner. Lexmark, you've got settings for your Lexmark here. Majea Welcome, Manage Printing, Task Manager. I'm going to go ahead and open up the Majea Welcome. Now, when you first open up Majea, you will have this welcome screen right here. You've got welcome, you've got live mode, you've got MCC, which covers your Majea Control Center, which we already looked at. Install software. With Majea, you will find software in media repositories. You've got RPM Drake, DNF Dragora, and then you can find a detailed list of applications here on the wiki. And then, of course, you can install it or you have more information, which gives you release notes, errata, newcomers, documentation, forums, wiki, chat room, bug trackers, community center, contribute, donations, and then, of course, join us. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. That is a quick look at Majea Linux. Guys, real impressed with it. I think I'm going to throw this on my older HP laptop and test drive it for a little while. It's been a while since I've used anything that was based on Mandriva, but I did use Mandriva back in the day, and I really enjoyed it. It was simple. It was quick. It was fast. 
This is a very light operating system, about 400 megabytes when you're at rest. So that means that your resources will be geared towards doing your tasks as opposed to just having an operating system up and running. Let me know. Is this something you might download, throw on a USB, put in a virtual machine and take for a test drive? Drop that in the comments below. And please don't forget, zip on over to the store, take a look around. Like I said, if there's things on there that you like, let me know. And if there's things on there you would like to see, let me know. Do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching the video, and I will see you in my next video.